Hey everybody, it's Nick uh, for today's tutorial. We're going to be looking at augmented reality uh, image tracking uh, to recognize uh, a like utility pole. And right now I've got like a QR uh, code or just some kind of image recognition uh, blank. And it's about, I think it's six centimeters by six centimeters. And I just printed it out on my printer and I stapled it to a utility pole in my backyard. And you can see when I scan it with my with my phone, um, uh, there'll there'll be an X that'll show up on it. I I I did this because um I realized that like when I was scanning it, I couldn't tell if it recognized the pole or not, because I'm actually going to hide the pole so that I could put a um well kind of a snake uh on top of the pole it was an idea that one of my students had um i made just a simple kind of helix in studio max a really really basic uh shape just to see what it would look like when it was actually like occluded by the pole um she's gonna make a much better uh sort of animal or like um like a bunch of different animals but this is just a demo so when i scan it you know the x appears and then i look up and there's my snake kind of hiding in the pole and the occlusion effect is actually pretty good it stays there stays there fairly well um and uh that's the idea though so what does that actually look like well i got a model that i made in studio max i took a measurement of the pole and i just made it like fairly tall i just made sure that it's taller than the object no one's ever going to see it because it's going to be hidden by the occlusion um and then i wrapped it in this kind of snake artifact and then I met, and then I made this kind of X geometry. You can see though the way that this is oriented is not the same. It's just because of the way that Unity kind of translates uh, things in space. We've talked about this in other videos. So basically, this is rotated. Um, it's it's all like 180 degrees in the Z and uh, and 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 negative 90 in the uh, in the X. What we're really paying attention to is the local pivot. So if we go in to the objects, we go to the hierarchy, you know, tab up here, go to effect pivot. You want to go into the rotate and you can, you can right click on this and you, you can, you can see that here. So well, actually here, I've got it rotated 90 and 180. Um, what really matters is that the green, the Y direction is pointed, uh, is pointed up or down. Uh, because that's what's considered kind of the the the, uh, the like up is the is the y-axis when we're looking at things in unity right um, and and that's the thing that always kind of gets us because because in max usually z is up um, so what we're looking for is is this green uh, pointing up or down and then the and then the z uh, in this case pointing uh, well sorry the the green should be facing out from where the QR code is in this case so if you look at the the code, the green should be coming out of this. It should be it should be pointing at us. Okay, that's where it's going to instantiate from, in, at least in, in this in this kind of scenario. And then in this case, we want the uh, the the um, uh, the Z or like the blue to be pointing up, and then the the red or the X to be pointing uh, to the. Let's see if we flip this to be pointing to the left sorry to the right <laughs> um so so z x and then y coming out at us and you can see that the the thing will start it considers that target the kind of zero 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 of where the object gets generated and so what we what we have to do is we want to place that pole you know and that that x or whatever is actually going to be at zero 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 and then the pole kind of goes out from there so that's it so from our perspective Oops, I'm gonna try to do this here. I'm not doing a good job of it. Anyway, it's more like it's more like this. Okay. And if if you're having trouble with it, I just kind of play around with it in max a couple of different times until I until you get the orientation right. Uh, once you've got it, you can always um just change the model from there. It just it just takes a couple of different compiles to get it. But that's it. So Nothing at this point really matters below here. We're only looking at, at generating the kind of, well, and this object's going to be hidden anyway, but um, I just use it so that I can hide the different parts of the snake here. Um, and uh, anyway, so that that's the way that works. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty legible. So again, when we scan it, you know, the X is going to appear and then the, the pole starts here and it goes all the way up. Okay, so we're going to, you know, so you have that model uh in in studio max and again i'm just looking at 
looking at that thing in top view. Sorry, I just want to make sure that I see this thing. I kind of rotated my my view in a really strange way. Uh, whoop. Anyway, go to left view. It's back there. Left view. Maybe I can just do this. I really messed it up. There we go. Okay. Anyway, that's what that that's what that actually looks like. So just pay attention where the origin is and pay attention to the, the local pivot. So when we look at this, we're under the local because that's actually the pivot that we've that we've changed. And if you have local turned on and you click on an item, you can see that you can see that pivot. So just pay attention to that. You you kind of get used to it. And then I've got a material, I just made a really dumb material for each of the objects. I just made the trunk, the snake, and the X marks. And the X marks are self-illuminated so that they're super bright so that I can see them. And I do that with all my markers. That's all that that is. So just these are standard materials. If you don't have a standard material, you just click on the base material in Studio Max, go to standard. That just makes the settings really simple. I just, I really prefer to write that way. Your material editor pops up if you press M. And I always go back to the compact material editor. I don't like the slate material editor. Um, I'm, I'm pretty old, so. Okay, so we got all that built. If you go into Unity, you're gonna build your standard AR project. Something to notice is if you go into the package manager, You've got to have AR Foundation 2.2.0 uh, at least in order to be able to do image recognition properly. Um, in order to do that, you've got to go and you open up, go to AR Foundation, go to CL versions, and we're gonna open. And what you know, what, what I want you to install for this for this demo, what works is Preview 2 220, okay, or at least whatever the latest. Or sorry, Preview 3 220. So whatever the latest 220 is. Don't go to three. Don't go to three one or whatever. Um, those do not compile correctly right now uh, for what we're doing. It's just going to be a waste of time. So make sure that all your stuff matches. Uh, I guess it's preview six. I think I've already installed it, but um, whatever that latest one is. Okay. Of that, of that, of that two, two. Okay. Looks like I've got preview six installed. Sorry. Preview six for all those AR foundation, AR subsystems, AR core XR and AR kit XR. And I'm, I'm doing this development right now for, for iOS. If you have Android, it's a little bit different, but that's what we're using right now. Don't upgrade it. Don't update it. Uh, anything past this for now. And I'm, and I'm using a unity 2019 2.2, uh, one F1. That's again, because I found right now as of this recording that there's problems compiling with the latest version of unity and I'm not messing around with it. This works great. Okay, the other things you're going to need is you're going to need a an AR target. And what I did was I just found one of these things online and and I just saved it and I printed it. It's a it's a it's a PNG file. Looks like it's, you know, um, it's just a pretty standard. It could be 500 by 500 pixels or something like that. It doesn't really matter, but you're going to go ahead and drag that PNG file, you know, into your uh, into your assets folder. Um and uh, and if, if you open the file, I gave you everything's in there, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the other thing you're going to do is uh, you're you're going to want to make an image reference library uh, if you if you didn't have one. And the way you do that is you go in, right click here, go to create, go all the way down to XR, and then you put in the image uh, the re reference image library. That's how you get that component in there. And then all you do is drag your target into this little chiclet up here, this little thumbnail, and then give it a name. And I specify the size, that way I know that the system will use the size of the target to render the, to represent the, the physical size of the object that I'm placing with it. That's gonna be looking to recognize that. And I guess I was, yeah, and this is actually set up a little bit differently. Um, we're looking at a, at a six by six uh, centimeters. Okay, so it's a good thing I looked at that, okay. And then let's see here. We've got we we I call this file snake on a pole. You drag in that uh, the file that you created, and everything uh, should come in. You can go you can you can go in um, and uh, in, and you can get the materials from it. This this one already has the materials. Um, the only thing that I changed was I went into the materials and I imported. And I changed the trunk material to a VR spatial mapping and inclusion material. Uh, I'll just show you what that looks like. So instead of a standard material, which is what it was, it was purple. 
you go in and just type in occlusion. Now that material will actually hide the trunk. And it'll be, and then you just basically reference it back here. So you go to materials, oops, go to my, um, here, you can just click on one of these little things and then it, it, everything that's in the system is here. So you've got your three materials. So just trunk, there you go. And that's it. Um, depending on how you imported it, you might have to, uh, you might have to remap those, but I just, I just changed that trunk material to, um, to the occlusion material and that's it. Um, the last piece that we'll need is the image recognition controller, and this is already written. But just to show you what's in there, you want to make sure to include XR and XR Foundation in the standard file. We're going to add a private image manager uh, reference. So we just we're going to take the tracked image manager and call it AR tracked image manager, but like lowercase AR. Then when the script wakes up where you're going to set the track to image manager to find object of type AR type manager. So that's it. We're just making the reference. And then we have two, two like utility functions, one that's called on enable. And it basically just says, uh, we're going, we're going to say how many images are we tracking and we're going to increment that list. And then if you disable it, we're going to remove that track image. Those are just utilities. You don't need them. And then lastly for debugging, we can, we can say like, if the image is changed, go ahead and throw the name of that image. But none of these things are necessary for this, for this, uh, for this, uh, script, sorry, for this, uh, scene. Um, you won't be, you won't be doing anything with them. You need to have them, but they're not going to affect anything. So basically if you, if you just take the script from my file and put it in or just open up the project, you, that's all you need. And I'll put a link to the, to the tutorial that this is based on if, if you're, if you're curious as to what the source is, but that, that's all you need. Um, okay. So the last thing you want to check for is just to make sure that that image recognition controller is set under the AR session origin. And that you've also added an AR tracked image manager. And, uh, that's just, you just type the, you know, AR image manager and drop that in there. The library references is going to be the reference image library drop that in, make sure that that has the AR target attached to it. And then the prefab is the object that you want to generate. So we, you would, you would drag this snake with pull in there and that's it. Okay. So in the files I'm going to give you, if you want to change the target, you're absolutely, you absolutely can. Uh, you just have to find your own image and then just make sure that under the image recognition library, uh, image reference library, you've, you've maintained the, uh, the physical size of it in uh, like meters. Um, and then just import your FBX from studio max, make sure that, that the rotation is correct. If you're going to use like an occluding material for that pole, then you, then, then, then go ahead and like apply that and then drag that into the tracked image prefab. Okay. Then you're going to go ahead and run it on your phone or your iPad or whatever. I do notice with this image tracking that when you are on site, you almost have to look at it like dead on at first. So like get, get relatively close to it. Like I've got here. And then that thing should just pop in from there. And there you go. It works a lot better on newer devices with faster processors, uh, especially when you're talking about Apple stuff. Um, I think it does require quite a bit of image processing, uh, but the effect is pretty good. So anyway, that's kind of do what I would call, call kind of pole recognition. Um, again, we're using the QR code or the, the image tracking in order to represent where that pole is. And then uh, we're going to hide that geometry with an occlusion material. And that's all pretty, uh, pretty standard kit. Okay. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I will uh, talk to you later.